right, well, welcome to our fourth installment of our OS Talks. I'm, this week I'm here with Corey Webb from Manus. You can find his site at manuscrafted.com. Uh, Corey, it's great to uh, meet you. I think we've met once at a Joomla conference uh, in New York a long time ago. But I, I believe so. I remember a, that. A lot has changed since that, uh, that fateful day. So it, <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you again. Uh, you're not from, I'm from the Cincinnati area, but you're not from around here. Tell us where you're from and uh, a little bit about what's been going on with you for the last few years. Yeah, so uh, I'm from Waco, Texas. Um, so it's kind of like halfway between Austin and Dallas, for those of you not familiar with Texas geography. Um, and so the last uh, few years, I've actually been running uh, Monos, and before that it was called Corey Web Media. Um, we just rebranded in November to Monos. Um, and so uh, I started the company five years ago, actually this month, and so we just celebrated our five-year anniversary uh, on February 1st, and so uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, we've, I've been uh, uh, more or less focused on building websites with Joomla, uh, building Joomla extensions, Joomla templates, things like that for really the past, you know, almost 10 years, but, uh, you know, professionally and full-time for the past five years. Okay. And you're working with a couple of really great guys. Uh, tell us a little bit about your team. Sure. So uh, my, my lead developer is actually uh, someone you've probably heard of, Joe LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's a longstanding member of the Joomla community. He's written a, a Joomla book about uh, Joomla development. Joe's kind of a, uh, just a jack of all trades in terms of development. He, he's he's uh, a really solid developer. So his uh, you know, he, he lives up to the hype uh, about his uh, his reputation. So uh, that's Joe. And then uh, uh, my designer, his name is Brendan Pittman. Uh, he's he's relatively new to the Joomla community. Uh, he's he, uh, just a really talented designer, has a really great aesthetic. Um, and uh, I just really, really like his work. And I'm excited that he's part of the team as well. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about your personal journey, maybe going from Corey Web Media uh, into a, a, a broader brand. Uh, what prompted that? Uh, I mean, it's fairly recent, November, right? right. So what prompted that? Um, what, what do you see as some of the pluses of that? Uh, what's been some of the challenges of that rebranding? Sure. So, I mean, I guess probably most small business owners can probably relate, but you know, when I started Corey Web Media five years ago, uh, I just went through this whole process of trying to think of a name and I it, just couldn't think of anything, right? And so uh, at the time it was just me um, so really, it just kind of came down to let's just do Corey Web Media or Corey Web Digital or Corey Web something. Um, I like the sound of media, so I went with that. Um, but you know, even then, I just really didn't like it. I don't like I didn't like having my name on the business name. I kind of didn't feel like it was very creative. And uh, but it made sense, right? When it was just me. So um, you know, fast forward a couple of years, and, and I started really thinking about okay, um, you know, let's let's change this. You know, I had I had one employee at the time. Um, you know, and so I thought, you know, let's 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 start thinking about a new name. It never really kind of came about because we weren't very creative with names. Uh, Joe came on board about a year and a half ago, and, and I really kind of started getting serious about changing the name. And then, uh, you know, added another uh, another employee or two, and it just really kind of got to the point where let's let's really do this. It's it, it it doesn't make sense for the business to be about me anymore. It's about the team, and so I wanted to to come up with something that really. Uh, talked, uh, you know, really spoke to that where it's, it's, uh, talks about what we do and how we do it, but also, uh, kind of takes the focus and the emphasis off of me personally, uh, and talks more about, uh, the team as a whole. Okay. How has that rebranding process, uh, kind of manifest itself? So, um, for instance, on social media, have you seen an uptick with that? Has that been a bit of a struggle because of the change, the name recognition? Sure. Yeah, so um, you know, one of the benefits of, of having a great designer um, is you know we we submitted our site, our new website, monoscrafted.com, to you know some of these web design galleries, and uh, we actually got accepted to quite a few of them, uh, including some really big ones. And so I you know I was kind of tracking our Google Analytics, and so within the first month um, of of launching the new website, we got something like 30,000 unique visits. I mean, it was some really obscene number. Wow. Uh, and before that, you know, we, we weren't getting a whole lot of traffic because, you know, we, our, our business wasn't really driven off of uh, the traffic to our website. You know, it's right. more, you know, personal uh, interactions with people. 
um, uh, you know, networking and things like that. So uh, we really actually have seen a big uptick in terms of um, you know traffic to our website. Uh, that helps a lot. And as far as social media goes, you know, we've had to change over to the new name. Uh, I set up a new Twitter account. So I, really, we didn't have a Corey Webb Media Twitter account. It was more just my personal cor- at Corey Webb Twitter account. Right. Um, so you know, I, I have to be a little more professional on my Twitter account, on my personal Twitter account, than than maybe you know other people might be. But um, you know, so so we set up a new one for for the Monos uh, brands. So it's at Monos Crafted. It's an exciting transition, and it's an exciting uh, kind of story, I think, because as you've grown from, the, like you said, the one man show into a small business, I think that's a, what a lot of our listeners and our, a lot of our watchers are trying to do with their own businesses. So this is really really interesting to hear you sure. talk about, you know, the, the uptick and some of the strategy you employed, uh, even just in what you just said. So. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the the big sites that you've done because I know you've done some pretty hefty sites through uh, through your career. Sure, yeah. So um, I think pretty recently we've done a website for the United Nations, uh, the, the United Nations Foundation, uh, called Sustainable Energy for All. So the website is sustainableenergyforall.org, um, and it's just a, a, a sustainable energy initiative to to get uh, businesses and, and organizations. Uh, committed to you know, the, the process of, of, of providing and, and using sustainable energy sources. So um, that's that was a, a really exciting project for us. You know, we got to work you know with a um, you know such a large and, and respected organization. And so um, that's that's been uh, really neat. Uh, we, we're we're getting ready to launch a website for the University of Texas. Um, there, it's University of Texas Press. Uh, so it's their uh, the publishing arm of the University of Texas. Uh, we built a website for Michigan State University's political science department. Um, that's been a, a few years ago now. Um, and then we just just last year we launched a website for the Associated Baptist Press. Um, they're a, a large, um, basically the Associated Press for Baptists uh, around around the U.S. and I guess around the world as well. Um, and so that's that was an interesting challenge. They had you know thousands of articles. Um, on an existing Joomla website, and so we had to, you know, we gave them a, a custom redesign. It's responsive, and we, you know, we uh, had to port over all of their articles from their existing system into, you know, an, an updated Joomla. Uh, and so that was a, a really, a really cool project, just cause, just from the the sheer volume of of content that we were uh, dealing with, and then they, you know, uh, the the traffic spikes that they've seen since, you know, upgrading the site and with a new design has been has been really cool to see as well. Let's talk about uh, the the uh, the whole. Well, you've got some big stuff coming up. Uh, you purchased uh, Joomla Praise, mm-hmm. and you're doing a pretty massive redesign of how that's going to function and look. Tell us a little bit about what that's going to look like in 2013. Sure. Um, so we're we're relaunching Joomla Praise as Theme Praise. Uh, so we're doing a complete rebrand, uh, new logo, new name. Uh, we're still, you know, referencing the praise name, obviously, uh, just for the consistency. Um, but yeah, we're, we're having, we're we're working on. We've got the new website pretty much built. Uh, we're working on the first theme, uh, and that's it's it's actually already the template in Joomla is already built. Uh, working on the WordPress theme, so that part of part of the strategy with 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 moving over to theme praise is we want to expand our offering beyond just Joomla templates. Uh, so we're looking at WordPress themes. We're actually going to actually, uh, sell just plain HTML templates. So okay. uh, we're using we're using Bootstrap. So essentially, it's a Bootstrap theme. So you can take it and use it for any kind of nice. project. So someone who's a, maybe a Drupal developer can take it and import it to a Drupal theme or uh, basically any other platform you can think of. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of smaller CMSs out there that that. Uh, have a lot of you know getting a lot of traction and you know we don't necessarily want to support all of those but we feel like you know having html templates will um, give them an opportunity to, to use our services and to use what we have uh, toward that end as well so it's pretty exciting what's going on in responsive design right now isn't it yeah absolutely it's a brave new web all over again in some ways right so you know it's you know I, Okay. Yeah, I just talked about responsive design at the uh, Joomla Day in North Carolina, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's definitely it's it's a really cool uh, a cool thing. You know, it's funny because I was I was uh, well, part of my talk was uh, mentioning how uh, the the world's first website, 
you know, you, you can find it online if you just the world's first website. It's actually a responsive website uh, because they didn't have all the the layout and the the floats and the you know tables or whatever else we have. It's just straight. HTML and uh, if you resize the window, it resizes with it. It was, you know, it's fluid and so uh, you know, it, it's this new hot item, hot thing that people are talking about. But I kind of feel like over the years of the web's evolution, uh, we complicated things, and I think we're getting back to to simplicity. And uh, that simplicity makes it easier to, uh, I think, to make to make uh, websites responsive. Talk a little bit about Joomla three. What you're excited about and uh... And what do you think the future of Joomla might be? Sure, um, uh, you know, I, using Joomla three the past few months, it's uh, the the interface is really great. I'm I'm really enjoying the the new interface. You know, I I kind of switch back and forth between two five and three for different projects, and it's it, you know I kind of get spoiled by Joomla three because there's there's some new features in it that I'm really enjoying. Um, it's hard to put my finger on one right now, but you know, it's it, there's just kind of an overall feel of it that you kind of get used to, and you kind of like it, and uh, it's hard to look back. But yeah, so I like that I like that Bootstrap is built into it. I like that the admin template is is uh, responsive, um, and you know things like that. So and I think and I also like that uh, third party developers are really starting to standardize on the Bootstrap markup, and that makes it a lot easier from a de- uh, development standpoint if if you use Bootstrap in your template. To uh, you know, to take advantage of that. So that's that's another really cool thing. Uh, as far as the future of Joomla, man, that's really hard to say. I mean, it's uh, I have I have my own ideas about what it should be. Um, whether or not it gets there, I don't know. Um, so my my thought about you know, the future is, um, I'd like to see Joomla move towards kind of the the, uni- the idea of the unified content model, where uh, you know everything is kind of built off of a core. Uh, content model where you can customize it, you can add uh, extra fields and, and things like that to, to create your own content types. And so, you know, you get a little bit of that with with third party add ons now like K2 and Zoo. Uh, but I'd really like to see that kind of thing built into the system. That would be, um, I think, really beneficial for everybody. Um, I'd also like to see better integration of, of kind of API standards so that um, Joomla could be used more as a uh, um, an API backend for a system. So, so the front end that actually consumes the content from a Joomla powered server doesn't necessarily have to be a Joomla template. I mean, you could build, you know, a, a, a mobile app or some other web app where you're you're hitting this Joomla server to pull in uh, your content through through API calls with JSON or XML or whatever. You know, uh, just a RESTful API. Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, that's pretty exciting, and I'm hoping for some of the same things. To be yeah. honest, um, you were just you just mentioned you were at Joomla Day, North Carolina. Uh, yes, tell us a little bit about that, and we'll be done. Sure. Yeah. So this is their first Joomla Day uh, in North Carolina, and they they did a great job. Uh, it was a, a team of uh, you know a, a few individuals that um, just just did a great job. They they hosted it at Duke University. Um, on campus, there's a conference center with a little hotel attached to it, and so that was really cool. Um, it was a really great facility, and you know, the whole time I was there, I was thinking, man, this would be a great place for the Joomla World Conference. Uh, it was just such a great facility. Um, but there was great speakers. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, going and seeing, you know, like Steve Burge was there, mm-hmm. uh, right? And then you know, the guys from Savvy Panda were there. They're always, uh, you know, you see them in a lot of these events as well, and, and they do a great job. And uh, Vic Drover was there as well, and so you know, just several other people. And I'm I'm certainly not mentioning them all, but um, you know, it, it's just a great time. You know, one of my favorite things about Joomla days is is really going and, and kind of hanging out with people and seeing people face to face that uh, you really only see you know you know on Twitter or on Facebook or on yeah. the Joomla forums or, or whatever. And so you know, it's kind of nice to put a face and a voice to to an avatar, right? So it's. Uh, that's that's one of my favorite things about Joomla days. I mean, there's certainly a lot of good content and a lot of good, uh, you know, uh, sessions and, and and things like that. But um, you know, it's it's really more about community, I think. And I, that's that was uh, I, I felt like that was really great this year. And so uh, I'm looking forward to the next one. You know, I, I think uh, I think they're they're in for really great things with that with that group. And um, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. Well, Corey, Thanks. listen, thank you so much for spending some time with us today on OS Talks. I know the uh, the crowd that watches these is going to really appreciate it. 
All right, well, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Super, thanks. Thanks.